Peter Rickman, rank and file leader of the Teachers Assistance Association. Peter, fifth day of the big protest. What's the news today? Well, the news today is that we continue to have thousands of people coming out to participate in a huge explosion of democracy where we're fighting for worker rights, we're fighting for fundamental human rights, we're fighting for civil rights. And this is a struggle that is about all workers in Wisconsin, not just public sector unions, not just unions, not just anyone who's part of the movement already, but we're building a movement, we're growing, we're expanding. Uh, you know, the energy in here is, is palpable, you can feel it, because so many people are getting involved in a massive movement for the first time in their lives. How would this have affected uh, teachers' assistance if this bill goes through? Well, all graduate assistants would have faced not only serious material harm, but also just an erosion of our basic fundamental civil rights. Uh, we would have lost the ability to come to the table as equals with the state and with the university to figure out and solve problems in the workplace. Uh, we would have paid triple uh, for health care and for people who are already working low-wage jobs. It would have been the death knell of graduate education for a lot of people. It would have eroded the quality of our university, but we've stopped it because graduate assistants and students, faculty, staff, and everyone from around the state is rallying to our cause and fighting with us. For most of its history, UW faculty hasn't had collective bargaining rights. Do you think that's important for UW faculty to have? Yeah, this fight is all about our civil rights. And it was, you know, it was an abomination of democracy that faculty and academic staff had been prohibited from exercising that basic and fundamental right to form a joint union for years, for decades. And when we won that, that was a victory for civil rights, a victory for human rights, a victory for workers' rights. We're not going to let them take us back to the era before we had actual rights guaranteed by law, whether it's faculty and staff, whether it's graduate assistants, whether it's home care workers or nurses. We're fighting for our civil rights. And they can't take that away from us. No politician can. But what happens if the bill passes, Peter? You know, right now, we're working to do everything possible to make sure that this bill does not pass. We have the ability to win this fight. Everyone in here believes we can win this fight. We're going to keep struggling like the end game is winning the legislative fight. But we're building a movement here. This is not just about what's going on in this building, in our capital, in the state of Wisconsin. This is about what we're doing to build a labor movement for the 21st century that fights for every worker's rights. But if the bill passes, couldn't that movement be seriously crippled by its inability to collect dues? Maybe, but this isn't about dues money. This, this has never been about you know union bosses. This has been about workers coming together, rising up spon spontaneously, and, and fighting back for the first time in years, in decades. Do you have faith that these crowds could sway the opinions of two Republican senators? I don't know if we can sway the opinion of, of two uh, Republican senators. What I do know is that we can demonstrate the raw power of workers coming together and fighting collectively. You think the taxpayers of Wisconsin are going to be on your side? The taxpayers of Wisconsin are here with us. Not just the fact that we are taxpayers, but if you look out tens of thousands of people every day, 40,000 people yesterday. All those folks are taxpayers too. They're not all public sector workers. This is a struggle of all working people in Wisconsin and nationally. The taxpayers of Wisconsin are workers and they're citizens too. Thank you very much, Peter. Yeah, thanks for being here.